Here's another dynamics problem that is somewhat instructive. Uh, let's say that we have this mass M that's sitting on an inclined plane and there's friction. And I've written already the parameters that are important here. The mass is five kilograms. Acceleration up the ramp is two meters per second squared. G we're gonna take as 9.81 meters per second squared. Coefficient of kinetic or sliding friction is 0 0.2, and the angle uh, that the plane makes with the horizontal is 30 degrees. And let's say that we push on this object with a, a, a force that we're going to call P, like that, in the horizontal direction. And the question is, what is P such that the acceleration up the ramp with these other parameters is two meters per second squared. So what we have to do is look at the forces acting on M and then apply Newton's second law. So the other forces that are acting on M besides P are the force due to gravity, which I'm gonna denote like this. This is just Mg, that's force due to gravity. And that force has two components. It has one that is parallel to the plane. In fact, if I kind of extend this little dashed line up here like this, this would represent the component of the gravitational force along the plane. This angle right here is also theta. So that means that this is mg times sine theta and there's also a component of the force due to gravity that is perpendicular to the plane. And this component is just mg times cosine theta. And then, of course, there's the normal force exerted perpendicular to the plane in this direction. Let me make sure you can still see it here. I'm just going to, this is not to scale, of course. But this I'm going to call the normal force, F normal. And there's one more force, and that's the force due to friction. And if we're pushing the object up the plane this way, the force due to friction operates in this direction back here. And I'm just going to denote that by this little vector here, F. That's the frictional force. And the length of it is not necessarily to scale either. We don't know how big it is, but... The point is, these are the forces that are acting on the mass M. We can also uh, project the pushing force P onto the parallel, uh, onto the, 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 the component that's parallel to the plane in this direction. So this is actually the piece of F that's actually pushing the whole thing up the ramp. And this angle here is also theta, which you can easily see. It's a, it makes the same angle with the horizontal that this one does down here. So that makes this P cosine theta. And there's a component of the, of the pushing force P that's also perpendicular to the plane. And this one is P sine theta like that. So now we have all the forces that we need to write uh, Newton's second law. Newton's second law is that the net force produces mass times acceleration or F net is equal to M A. So how do we write that? Well, let's look at the forces that are causing it to accelerate up the plane. There's only one, and that is P cosine theta. So P cosine theta minus the forces that are causing it to want to go down the plane. Well, there's a component due to gravity, which is mg sine theta. And there's also the frictional force that's trying to make it go down the plane, or rather resisting the motion uh, going up the plane. So minus the frictional force, and this is equal to Ma. We also know that the frictional force, F, 
is equal to mu, coefficient of sliding friction, times the normal force. So if we know what the normal force is, then we'll have this equation complete. So I'll write that as F is equal to mu times the normal force. So let's take a look at the normal force. The normal force is in this direction, and there are two forces acting opposite to it that are producing it, in fact. There's the component due to gravity perpendicular to the plane, and there's the component of the pushing force perpendicular to the, complain, uh, to the plane. So the normal force then is equal to mg cosine theta plus p sine theta, like that. So we can write uh, F net equals ma, this equation right here. Let's bring that one around over here. We can write that as p cosine theta minus mg sine theta minus f, which is little is little f, times mu times mg cosine theta plus p sine theta is equal to m a. And remember what we want to solve for is p. And rather than go through all of the algebra necessary to show you that, there's not very much, but I'm going to push it up here and I'm just going to write down the solution. And the solution is P is equal to M times A plus G times sine theta plus mu times cosine theta and all of this is divided by cosine theta minus mu times sine theta. So let's plug the numbers in. P is equal to 5 times A, the acceleration is 2, plus G, which is 9.81 times the sine of 30 degrees plus mu, which is 0 0.2, times the cosine of 30 degrees. And all of that is divided by cosine 30 degrees minus mu, which is 0 0.2, times the sine of 30 degrees and that works out to be 56.16 newtons approximately. But what I want to caution you about is uh, assuming that that's the end of the the problem. I mean if you if you have this equation right here you might be tempted to say okay what if it's uh, accelerating down the ramp at uh, two meters per second squared. So you might want to, you might be tempted to just change the sign of this and put a minus two in here, but that wouldn't work. And if you look at the picture again a little closer, if it's accelerating down the ramp, then the frictional force is back in this direction. And also, mg sine theta is bigger than p cosine theta. That's why it's going this way, but the friction that way, the signs of those things change. It'd be the same kind of a setup, F net equals MA, but when you work it all out, uh, you get a completely different result than you'd get if you just plug in a minus 2 right there. So I just want to caution you about that.